Now, we have different objectives in here, but before we do the objectives, I just give you a little um, introduction about myself. Um, I'm actually, a, I've been a learning and development uh, expert for um, over 15 years. I'm actually, uh, uh, I'm, you know, from this area, from the Middle East, but I've graduated from Auckland, New Zealand. I'm sure you all know Auckland, New Zealand. I graduated in, in commerce and IT, and I have been working on different projects in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and I've been working uh, with, remotely with New Zealand government in different innovative projects to do with learning. And uh, thank you, Farah, for sharing uh, the introduction for kickstarting this from the Emirates College. And we have Sarah from ECAE. Thank you very much. We appreciate the intro. We'd love to connect. We really enjoy working with, with different organizations and, and sharing the learning, actually, and sharing the learning. And I will be asking you questions in this session now. Uh, while others may be choosing to introduce, we uh, let me just run through those uh, session objectives. Now, what do we want to get out of this session today? We would like to have, uh, notice the first uh, word, we wanna assess our potential for creativity and innovation. You are probably asking this question, what is, it, what is the difference between creativity and innovation? So it's a very good question. And this is something we'll be discovering in this session. However, we really want to apply this. We want to know how this works how to be creative and how can I apply it in the workplace? What are the non-conventional ways to think outside the box? I'm sure you've heard this, this statement a lot. Think outside the box, think outside the box. How do we actually do this? How do I think outside the box? Is it just thinking differently or do we have different ways to think? Or do we have different tools? So this is what I will be discussing. And also we, have, we will be discussing different ways uh, uh, to use strategies for creative thinking in the workplace. This, um, so those are the four outcomes that I would like to uh, end today uh, with and, and the discussion with that we have all gained something out of this. However, um, if anything is left and, and you're not sure about something, you're more than welcome to send us an email, ask a question. I'm very happy to send all the resources and all the sources actually for this, uh, for the research. And thank you again for the people who are introducing themselves. Welcome Fatima uh, from the United Arab Bank. All right, let's carry on with our, um, with our, our um, lesson now. Now, creative thinking, we want to look at creative thinking. What is creativity? What do we mean by creative thinking? You hear this word a lot. What does it mean to be creative? Isn't it related to the word create, to, to, to start something, to begin something? Well, for me to, to actually get this right, now I really want some feedback from you. I would like us to, to start a little activity. Now you don't, again, you don't have to speak on the microphone or Zoom. You can just share your answers. I'll be giving some answers. Now, just to juggle our thinking now, I'd like us to play, play this little game, little game that actually it has been done before by different researchers and I will share the resources with you again. Um, I would like you to imagine, to imagine you have 10,000 paper clips. Just imagine you have 10,000 paper clips, all right? Now give me, just imagine, think outside the box and give me other five alternative uses for those paper clips. What other way we can use paperclip, whether it's one paperclip or 10 or 1,000 or 10,000, what other ways we could use the, those paperclips other than clipping paper or clipping money? Can you think outside the box? Can you just give me any suggestion? By the way, there is no such thing as a silly idea. I welcome all ideas, okay? All right, Hamad, thank you very much. Making a chain. So Hamad wrote making a chain, yep. If you'd like to uh, uh, do, start a chain, you can use this or uh, Farah said a key chain, two, three. Uh, Claire and said, use a belt, you know, make it as a belt. Okay, decoration, is that what you mean Fatima? Decoration, we can create some kind of decoration with it. Yep, we could, yes. So, how, well, that's, that's very nice. How many, yes, yes, thank you Fatima. How many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, come on. Uh, anybody else? So I'll, I'll add my own idea so I don't just leave this on you. Um, 
Have you ever tried to remove the SIM card from the iPhone? You know, you just uh, snap one of those, just remove a bit of this of this paper clip and get the SIM card out. Okay. Ihsan, thank you. Yep, you can hang the clothes with it, really. You can hang the clothes with it. So now we have six ideas. I said five ideas, six ideas. Let, let me challenge your mind a little bit more, okay? Well, look at, I don't even have to ask you. All these ideas are coming up. Sarah saying necklace, yep, make some kind of necklace. I want to tell you something. Do not underestimate these ideas, you know. So maybe we're living in, in, a, in, a, in a comfortable society, but there are other countries you know, in the third world countries, people suffering, they could actually make use of these suggestions that you are making. So if it's not important for you, it is actually important for someone else. Those people try to get their hands on anything, any resources to create something out, out, of, out of nothing. Um, Permanent is saying seal open packs of food. Yep, you can just use that. All right. Can I just steal another minute of your time or two and give me more ideas? Because I'm trying to get to something. This is our opener to creative thinking. Yes, Claire Ann, opening locks. Now, provided that you know you forgot the key or something, you can yet try to open the lock with it. Yes. So we have seven, eight plus ideas. Anybody would like to pop in an idea? Give me one or two ideas. Our minute hasn't finished yet. Give me other ideas. What other 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 ways to to do it? Let me let me give you an idea of my own. If we have ten thousand paper clips, I would actually take them, melt them create a monument of somehow. I would probably uh, create something you know, like a bigger monument that says DXB. So it's, it's no longer a paper clip. It's just, you know, no longer paper clips. The paper clips are gone. I have converted them to something else. Okay, permanent. Thank you. Hanging calendar. Yes, hanging calendar. Yep. So we can comfortably say we have 10 more. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Hassan says build a home. You could, yeah, you, you, you could use it, yeah, if you have 10,000 enough, uh, enough if, even if it makes a small home, you know, even for, you know, not a big home, small home, um, you could use it. And that gives me another idea. You can make a box out of it, out of it, really. Now, let me ask you a question here, away from this. If I am to tell you, yep, Asma, thank you, use it as a stand. See, the ideas are still coming. This is just building into my question here. If we are to, if I say imagine, your management told you, I want you to treat this question seriously, just imagine. The management, your management told you, treat this question with Select and Ali seriously and sit down for an hour and come up with as many uses as we can. Do you think we will come up with 10 uses only or do you think our mind will expand and create more uses? Do you think we'll come up with more uses? How many more uses you think? If we got now, we are giving ourselves three minutes, four minutes. How many uses you think we will come up with for ten thousand paper clips if we sit down and think for an hour? G give me a figure. Give me a number. How many? How many do you think? Okay. Fifty. Yeah. Hundred. Yes. Thank it's you, Hamid. Thank you, Pramanand. Yes. Fifty or hundred. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Asma, you could be. You could get more. No. My question is, if this tells you something about the mind, but before I ask this question, I have another question for you. How many of you, when I opened up, so I went from this slide here to the next slide, and then I ask you this question, how many of you thought, probably some of you thought, what is this guy asking? Uh, uh, um, how many alternative uses for a paperclip? A paperclip is a paperclip. How many of you thought like this just on the first few seconds? But then, we didn't imagine we'll come up with all those ideas. Okay, thank you, Hassan. Im unmeasurable, you know, we cannot measure. So what I'm trying to say is, is if you submit or, or you, you, you subject your mind to the right conditions, right environment, it can actually expand beyond what you think it is, it is stopping. So it's not gonna stop at some stage. We are busy with many things in life. We have schedules, we have deadlines, we have paperwork, we have many things to submit and deal with and fulfill. But if maybe our mind is busy, but if we subject our mind to the right environment, it can have the ability to expand more and more and more. Now imagine, this is just a game with paper clips. Imagine we apply this in real life. Now. What am I saying here? What am I trying to get to? Actually, I'm trying to build a foundation for what is creativity. Now, 
based on this gaming, I would like to introduce to you the three types of thinking. Now, what are the three types of thinking? <clears throat> we have what we call first, let me, let me bring your attention to this one first, linear thinking. What is linear thinking? Have you, have, have you done linear mathematics before? Who can recall linear mathematics from school or high school? What does linear mean? Linear means, anybody knows what linear means? Anybody, the word linear? Excuse me, linear means straight line. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you, Hamad. Straight line, yep. Linear equations, Parahes, thank you. She, you're recalling your mathematics, asthma straight, yep. Linear type of thinking is the straight line type of thinking. This is the type of thinking where you say, one plus one equals two. It is only black or white. There is no other answer. This type of people, when I tell them, can you give me other, can you give me uses of a paper clip? Give me five uses. This type of people would say um, to clip paper. I would proceed and ask them, think more. They would say, well, maybe clipping money. I'll ask them, just think more. They can't think outside the box. Okay, yes, thank you, Hassan. Same steps. They just think on a straight line. They think life is either black or white. They're, everything is system. Everything is structure. Okay, now, there are some other people. By the way, before I proceed, we have those three capacities within ourselves. We just make use them in different ways. But let me explain the other ones. Convergent thinking. Convergent thinkers are the type of people who don't think on a straight line. They look at the idea from different points of view. So, for example, I tell you, think of a paper clip. You'll tell me, um, I can hang clothes with it. Well, I can say, okay, great. This is no longer clipping paper. This is just hanging clothes, right? This is actually different. You can say, a lady may say, you know, I can clip my hair with it. Yep, that's different point of view from the original idea. Someone would say, okay, you know, I'm going to open up the the uh, uh, the iPhone and remove the SIM card. I'll say, yep, that's 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 right idea. It's called convergent thinking. You know, you don't think on a straight line. Now, what they call the mother of creativity is divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is not thinking a straight line. Obviously, it's not just looking at the idea from different points of view. It's actually taking the whole idea to a whole new different levels. And this is presented by different researchers. One of them is. The most recent one that I've witnessed is, is a reformer of education. His name is Sir Ken Robinson. He has awesome research and, and talks, and I can, I can provide the references. But anyway, so back to divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is actually taking the whole idea from its core and looking at it and then taking it to a different ground and exploring it. For example, when, when I tell you, it's, it's uh, give me an other ideas of the paperclip, you'll tell me decoration. I give you 10,000 paper clip. I go out, I come back, I don't see 10,000 paper clips. I see some kind of beautiful design. You have made some kind of picture. And I'm asking, where are the paper clips? They have gone. You have actually transformed the whole idea of it's not, a, not even clipping anything, it's something else. Or I go outside the room, you take the 10,000 paper clips, you melt them, and then you create something else. You create DXB or you create your name. And then I, I come back. Uh, and I say, well, it, it's gone. Yes, Hamad, thank you. Exploring all possible potential uses of the solution, yes. Explore different, way different, all as in many. Look at it from many different points of view. So let me ask you all a tricky question. And then we'll, we'll, we, will, we will sink deeper in the world of creativity. <clears throat> Which one of those three methods of thinking is the best way of thinking? It's a tricky question. Try just to answer me. Which one of those three ways of thinking is a tricky question? Uh, sorry, is the best way of thinking? Okay, Farah says no best way. Hamad says all of them. Okay, awesome. Any other answers? Any other answers? Okay, all right, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Yes, I, I, I've been doing this for over 10 years and, and, and Yes, um, and I do get common answers, mixed answers. Uh, uh, um, yes, thank you, per permanent answers, divergent. And Hassan says we need all types. Hamad says depends on the outcome. Yep, depends. So many people say it depends on the outcome. This is great, awesome. This is what I would expect from, from, from you know, the, the audience. Thank you very much. Um, 
Absolutely, the answer the answer is your, most of you are right. It depends on the situation. For example, I'd like you to go to the accountant in your company and tell them, "Hey, uh, sir, can we actually do this? Um, can we actually do this uh, transaction without an invoice?" What is the accountant going to tell you? What is the accountant going to tell you? Or you can tell him, "Let's do this money transaction without a receipt or without an invoice." What do you think he is going to tell you? He is going to say. Excuse me, I'm not here to break the company rules. At many stages of our lives, we do need linear thinking. Company policies, country laws, the laws protect the country from being messed. Okay? You know, if, 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 if I break the law, I can't tell the police, hey, you know, think outside the box. Let me go this time. Sorry, the police has to enforce the law. Okay? So linear thinking is needed. However, the problem is, the problem is when we treat matters in life that do urgently require that desperately require divergent thinking we treat them with linear thinking for example people related problems you want to solve people related problems you know you get this fight or flight approach i'm either gonna i'm either gonna yell at him or run away i'm either gonna stay silent or you know just yell no well there are many ways to solve a problem with the behavior or people related issues or conflict there are many different ways, you know, people in sales, you need to, and marketing, you need to come up with many different ways to think outside the box. Uh, um, development, developing products, developing services, enhancing uh, the state of a department or an organization. You can't really think structurally. The answer to my original question is we need all three ways of thinking, but nowadays we are lacking humanity, lack, lacking divergent thinking. And hence, divergent thinking is the mother of creativity. Um, it, it gives birth to uh, um, creative thinking. So based on this, based on this, let me ask a question. What is creativity? Based on the discussion we just had now, what is creativity? Could someone define creativity for me? You can refer to the, the examples that I've given you, the activity we just did, or you can um, uh, or you can um, use your own knowledge. Okay, thinking outside the box. Yep, I got answers from uh, Amlinia and, uh, and Claire about it's thinking about outside the box, correct? <clears throat> any other any other answers? Thinking outside, yes, that's that's a common, that's a common answer. So there are different definitions for creative thinking. However, there's one of them I want you to focus on, but let me just go through these. Um, so it's the ability to imagine or invent. Yes, Ehsan, thank you. Thinking in different ways. Sarah, generating new ideas. Yep. Producing something unpredictable. Farah, yes. Yep. That all fits. As you can see, all the list right in front of you here matches with your answers. However, there, there is, however, one specific answer I would like you to, to, to really consider and think about um, um, let me go through this so to imagine or invent something you generate new ideas by combining two things together changing things or reapplying existing ideas so there is there is a a common misconception going on that we if you are creative you know you really need to be like thomas edison you know the the, the, the scientist who discovered electricity not entirely correct. If you need to be creative, you need to be as, as awesome in art as Picasso. Not entirely correct. You need to be like Einstein. Not really. You need to come up with something like uh, Mark Zuckerberg, like Facebook. Not really. Thinking outside the box, creative thinking is generating something new. It is also recognizing current patterns that we haven't paid attention to before. Okay? You could be combining two existing things. You could be changing something existing. You could be coming up with something new. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, um, but you could be actually reapplying existing ideas. All right. A cr creative thinking is actually attitude to accept change and new ideas. All right. Willingness to try different possibilities. Flexibility is essential. Now, let me, let me, let me ask you a question. Very quick question about this point here that I'm telling you about, very important point. So we, we do understand this, we, we can all relate to this, but look at this point here. Reapplying existing ideas, right. <clears throat> so I want you to, to, to think about the first time the, 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 mob, the, the iPhones came out. Let me ask a question. 
the the um, yes, Farah, like like recycling, uh, using raw material to create something something new that we need, but we use something existing. It's not always about um, coming up with something awesome like Facebook or creating uh, creating uh, discovering electricity. So let me ask you this question about the second point here. Um, my question is, think recall the time back when the, the, there was Facebook. Um, when oh, sorry sorry iPhone, when iPhone came out, <clears throat> were there already mobile phones existing or was that was the first mobile phone? Was no, iPhone? Existed. They existed before. Thank you very much. Yes, they did exist before. Now my other question is, did touch screens exist or they did not exist at that time? Did we have touch screens? Did we have touch screens? Yes, Ramanand, thank you. Yes, we did have touch screens. Maybe you're not on mobile phones. However, if you go to hospitals, you go to banks, you go to certain corporations, government departments, they, they had them. They actually had them from the late 90s and then, and, and, you know, going, yeah, PDAs, thank you. Thank you, Hamad. You know, for people who remember PDAs, uh, um, uh, um, you know, your organizer. So what did Steve Jobs do? He combined two ideas together. The good old Nokia's with the buttons and all these uh, Sony Ericsson ones, he combined them with, with, with um, the touchscreen idea. Not just that, he did a calligraphy course. And based on his calligraphy course, he was inspired by creating awesome icons. If you look at all these, all these, if you revisit all mobile phones, they didn't have these awesome icons that you have right in front of you. So anyways, creativity can be reapplying ideas that you have. Moving on. So what does it mean to have the skills for creative thinking? You need to be ready to be engaged in the following. What do I mean? All these concepts you see right in front of you, okay? Um, you need to ask the right questions. All right, you need to initiate. You need to start and initiate ideas. You need sometimes to look at the big picture, but you really need to expand and look at the, you need to look at the small picture and also the big picture. Always think alternative. That's what I got you to do on the original exercise of, of the paperclip. Think in alternative ways. You need to be ready to do all those. However, uh, my question is, barriers, uh, there are barriers of creativity. There are barriers of creativity. Now, we want to identify those barriers and we want to remove them. We don't want to have those barriers. Okay. So let me ask a question. <clears throat> now, it's a small activity. I'm going to show you a picture, but I would like everybody to respond. Even if you respond by voice, even if everybody spoke at the same time, even if you all typed at the same time, you can do voice typing. Don't think a lot. I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind when I show you the following picture. I'm going to show you a picture, and I would like you to tell me, what do you see? What is this? Don't think a lot. Just tell me what comes to your mind. Ready? Three, two, one. What is this? This is not workshop. Oh, sorry, not Photoshop. I can. Ah, okay, Claire says ghosts. Some people are surprised, okay? I swear to you, this is not Photoshop. So no, don't be scared, there's an explanation. But this, okay, that sounds says ghost. What's the a first thing? Pray, a man praying. Man praying, okay, 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 you can say that, thank you. Um, does it look like, okay. It, ghost, spider web, that's great. Now you guys know I'm playing with your mind. Ghost, yes, I got a few answers that says ghost. Um, there is an explanation. Don't worry. I'm not lying to you when I'm when I'm telling you there is. It's not Photoshop, but I'm gonna explain it. You are attending innovative and innovation and and um, paradigm effect, Hamad. Yep. Yeah, okay. You're attending innovation course, so uh, definitely we're not discussing ghosts. But I'm just making it a little. Test. Can I say it's fantasy? Yeah, it's it's there. It's it's design. It's it's actually there. It's not. Um, it is not uh, something that's designed by Photoshop. This thing is there. Someone went there and took a picture. Um, I have someone on Galaxy. Uh, do you want to say something? Otherwise, I'm going to request you, please, if you can go on mute, because just for the background. 
I'll, I'll help you. I'll just, if you don't mind, sorry, I put you mute just because of the background. Okay. All right, so uh, now, okay. First thing, we said ghost. Why, why did we say ghost? Why did we say ghost? Let me just bring it closer to you. I wasn't lying to you when I told you uh, uh, um, somebody went out there and took a photo. I just didn't tell you what did they do before the photo, all right? They actually went and designed it. It's, it's, it's silk wiring. It's just silk wiring. So, you know, if you Google how to make a ghost, you will have these people going there and just trolling, trolling putting it in a position where it kind of uh, freaks people. But here's my question. Why did the first thing that come to our mind, ghost? Who told you what a ghost looks like? What's a ghost? And how do we know there is a ghost? Okay, yeah, do, so people believe in the other world, people believe in spirituality, but my, my question is, how do you know this is a ghost? Who told you this is a ghost? Who dictated uh, uh, um, to, okay, to our mind that this is a ghost, okay? All right, so for I said frame of person, we know they're human look alike. What else, what else? What else told you this could be a ghost? Where did you read that? Uh, okay, who told you the white color is actually a ghost? Where did you read this from? Oh, thank you, Hamad. Yay, Hassan, Farah, awesome. Everyone in answering movies, movies. Is this correct? And I'm gonna ask you, um, can you prove to me the mobile phone exists? Yeah, there is a mobile phone. I used it. Yep. I can tell you, okay, when was the last time you had a cup of coffee with a ghost? Difficult to prove, okay? You can't say this. But actually, we unconsciously, that's another, that's another discussion. If, if, if you come and join us, we discuss how the subconscious mind works and it, how it applies to our life and practically how we can... We can um, modify and work with those all uh, wrong ideas so unconsciously we get i don't want to say the word programmed but, that, but that's what happened w ideas get dictated to our mind and what we we don't say we believe them but the issue is unconsciously they happen to us so what I, what i want to say is just because we are bombarded with stories movies and everything it's just an example you tell me of course this doesn't scare me it's, it's just a ghost but i'm just telling you just an example that we get ideas built in our mind subconsciously. These ideas actually, they're, they're false. Some ideas are false. They become blocked to creativity, okay? Now imagine everything else in life. One of the biggest barriers of creativity is preconceived false ideas that can block you from divergent thinking. Sometimes, you know, we believe in things that are not true. You know, for example, I, I have a conflict at the workplace with my colleagues. I, I believe certain piece of work should be done this way. She believes it should be, should be done another way. Um, one of us is right, but the other one is wrong. We very, very stuck with our idea that we are right. Conflict forms because we don't want to think outside the box. So being very careful of what, um, I just brought you this example. This is a simple example, really. Uh, but you know think about life in general what have i allowed my mind what did i allow to dictate to my mind to 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 control control and and and, and manage things remember that our our mind you know controls our actions especially the subconscious mind that is another uh, discussion okay so there are other barriers to creativity things such as you know well there's only one right answer or or you know um um, you ask, is this really practical? I mean, these are the things I want you to focus on. You know, when you talk about creative thinking, people ask you, or well, some people say, is this really practical? Come on, let's get real. Creativity is real, you know? Isn't creative to do with playing? No, it's not. Well, it is, but it's also to do with other things. Many other things in life. It is thinking outside the boxes, generating different ideas. It is recognizing important patterns that we didn't even think about before. It is about removing blocks, okay? Um, not dedicating the right time for creative thinking. One of the biggest, so this is from my experience, okay? Yep, thank you for subjectivity. Yep, so subjectivity, subjectivity fallen here. You build preconceived ideas. You, you, you're not objective and that's it. So the second, and, and from my experience, the second big barrier, I mean, they're not in order, but the other big barriers are those bottom, to issues have i'm sure you have experienced this before before at your in your life at some time okay 
fear of looking foolish. I'm too scared to share my idea. I think it's an awesome idea. I think it's great. It's going to solve our problems. But what if they ridicule me? What if, what, what if I'm wrong? What if you have, you've done your checks? You checked everything is correct, but you're still scared. You're still worried. Uh, um, what if I get ridiculed? What if I look foolish? The problem is these, these, these are the ways of, of um, that can really uh, block your, your uh, creative thinking. So you're going to ask me, okay, so sh does that mean I shouldn't be critical? No, you can be critical. You can be critical. Um, uh, now, let me just increase this other list. You can definitely be critical. Absolutely. Okay. However, however, um, you need to be careful when you're being critical. So the issue is uh, uh, um, people get to be critical without being creative, but being creative requires you uh, uh, to be critical. Okay. Why? Because when you're being creative, you want to explore all different avenues. You want to analyze everything. Okay. Because creativity is for what? It is for problem solving. Okay. So what you want to do is encompass all ideas, whether they're critical ideas or open ideas, is when you expand your mind. When you expand your mind. So really, what we want to do is. Uh, um, I, I wouldn't want to get stuck on the left side, you know. I don't want to be on the analytical, okay? I will use what is needed again, if we look at uh, linear thinking again. I would be critical sometimes. I would need to, um, to, to force certain structures, but at the same time, I need to be open-minded. I need to be easygoing. I need to be approving of, of certain things. Some things require focus. Some things do not require focus, and hence, I give us warning that we, no, if you want to say, okay, how can I start applying this? So I would like us uh, to, to, to be war, to warn ourselves, we're not falling into those pitfalls, otherwise there'll be blocks of creativity. Of course, our image is important, but we cannot always, always think about what will people think. If you have done your research well, and you know you've done a very good job, then go ahead and don't worry about what people say. If you have done your calculations again, do not fear of failure, okay? And we need to stop the negative talk, okay? So all these uh, points here, so all these points here, they actually, uh, um, they're okay in, in other occasions, but in certain occasions in life when you need to develop and move forward, you cannot keep holding on to your fears, and, and, and um, you cannot be comfortable with one system. This, if, if, if one way doesn't work, you need to try other different ways. Hence, there are different certain ways to help you become creative. So we know the first one. However, you need to adapt different routines. Okay, so different approaches, different routines. You need to actually explore different angles. That's you know, a small practice of the paperclip. You take it on a bigger scale, it helps you to look at things from different points of view. You need to be ready to accept different ideas from different people. You need to be open for feedback, actually. Feedback is essential. And then you can filter later. There's a filtration stage. But let's not block people uh, 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 from, you know, instantly. Let's not make jump into judgments. But let's, let's listen to everything. Hence, this gives us the five principles that you can keep in mind. Please explore everything. So don't get stuck in the small detail, okay? Um, certain restrictions do not work, right? Now, always explore the problem from different points of view. There are some things that we treat them as facts. They are actually opinions. Just question them. Is this a fact according to what? Is there a company policy based on this? No. Is there a law based on this? No. Then why are we treating it like so? Well, my colleague has always thought that it's the right way to do it, and we have always worked with this. Well, that's one way for you to, to ask questions. All right. Um, look for patterns. There's certain patterns that are not suitable. Maybe you need to create different new patterns. Okay. So now, my question is to you, which is finally, we looked into this. So what is the difference between creativity and innovation? Could someone tell me? What is creativity and what, what's the difference between creativity and innovation? We spoke about creativity. 
Anybody has any idea the difference between creativity and innovation? We've, we hear those words a lot. Innovation cannot happen without creativity. That's why most of the session was focused on creativity. So hence, what is innovation? Any ideas? I think creativity is like doing something that was not done before. Yep. And innovation would be to work on making something better, which is already existing. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Amelinia, for sharing. Um, so that's one, one point here to discuss. Okay. Uh, so permanent says uh, innovation can be a new idea. Let me save time and let me just jump right to it. Uh, Sarah says innovation is introducing change into a relatively, relatively stable system. Yep, that's that is correct. Let me just uh, all what you're saying is is pointing to the right direction. There's one simple difference. First of all, there is no innovation without creativity. Innovation is simply converting creativity into action. It is as simple as that. You see an invention, the correct way of looking at it, you don't usually say it's creative. You say it is innovative. Innovation is basically just translating your creative ideas into action. Okay? So that, that's what it is. Creativity is not enough by itself without actually putting it into action. We're looking at, at a complete experience. Uh, we're looking at what we call in, in certain countries, especially in places like New Zealand, they call a wrap around service. You wrap around the whole thing. It's not just about thinking creatively. I spoke about thinking outside the box. Awesome. Now we're in the workplace. We need to solve problems. We need to develop. We need to move forward. Time to talk action. Innovation is actually talking action. It is um, looking for a practical, workable solution to solve a problem. Okay, it is actually transforming your ideas into something useful. It is actually to create a business value. Now we're talking about practicality. We're talking about value. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, Hamad, thank you. Action is derived from the traction, and hence we need to get into the flow. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Hamad, for sharing this. Yep, absolutely. Um, you know, innovation is, you know, while you're sitting and thinking outside the box, that's awesome. However, innovation is actually changing things like changing behaviors. You, innovation works everywhere. Again, it's creativity and innovation is not just about technology or, or art. You need to have different, you have people related problems. So how can I change behaviors? You adapt different mentalities. You adapt, sorry, different approaches. You deliver different types of courses. You do, for example, role plays. You're talking about behaviors. You, you do certain uh, um, um, performance meetings. You motivate people differently. You come up with all these ideas of the things I've just counted, and you apply them. That is innovation, OK? Innovators are obsessive problem solvers. They look into the problem, and they just want to solve it. So this is something I could, I could share with you later. Um, it is actually looking at the star. It's innovation looking at the start and going through different stages until if you see the whole thing is about creativity up to the last points, okay? So you, you, you convert, or so, so you get into your innovative challenge, you put your challenge statement, you do mind sharing with your colleagues, you actually generate the idea. So you present the, the problem and you get the solutions, you generate different ideas, you combine it. Remember creativity about co co combining things. So that's we're just being creative at the moment. Then you develop workable ideas. And then from the point seven up to eight is seven is actually innovation, is implementing the idea. <clears throat> and profit is just an example. You're looking for an outcome, looking for a solution. So it's not just about thinking outside the box. It's actually about going a whole, through a whole process to create a solution. And hence, you have this formula with you. This formula works everywhere, OK? So innovation is basically creativity plus risk-taking. What do we mean by, by risk-taking? Risk-taking means uh, um, you actually invest money, you get teams, you put human resources, OK? you put different resources into your creative idea to introduce something new and workable. Again, remember, creativity is awesome. However, um, however, it 
is not enough without putting the right resources into it. Let me just ask you a question. Could you give me examples of innovation that you have witnessed in your life? Could it be in any country, like in anywhere in, in UAE, Saudi Arabia, the GCC, anywhere that you are, anything from the workplace, um, anything that you could think of? Uh, give me examples. So, I mean, I mean, I can easily count things. So innovation, again, I told you, it's not just about inventing something where right new, well, something awesome and new, it could be something to solve a problem. So, and if, if you know, Yep, uh, Amlinia, thank you. Digital visas issued going fully paperless. That's an awesome, innovative solution. That's great. Thank you. I mean, I can, I can think of countless awesome examples that I have um, witnessed in, in Dubai, such as, you know, the, the metro, um, the tram. Um, uh, yeah, thank you, Sarah. Amazon, what an awesome idea. Gave the, the Amazon and eBay and other platforms gave the, the, the birth to, to controlling things from home, you know working from home, ordering things from home, marketing online from home. Yes, thank you, Pramanan. The COVID scan. Problem, we need to scan. We need to know, uh, we, we need to know data. So bring in the mobile, apply the app. What an awesome, innovative idea. Someone was creative, thought about it, made it happen uh, by being innovative. Thank you everybody for those um, examples. Other examples, they keep going on and on and on. Now, what I want to do is um, I'm just going to launch a survey. So just want to look, so we're closing now. And I just want to say uh, uh, thank you for, for participating and everything. I'm going to launch a, a poll. I just want to let you know that um, our creative thinking course, uh, anything related to creative is, uh, creativity is, is longer than a day. It's, it's more than 45 minutes, but different. Um, courses we usually we do it in two days we dissect and discuss all those aspects we take your examples we bring them together and we try to to uh, um, um, make work happen and create solutions we may not be able to create you know miracles in the course but we definitely create solutions to take home with you so i've launched the poll in zoom okay yes Asan, thank you absolutely the zoom great support great help okay that gave us the ability to communicate and, and reach to others and actually solve problems and get the job done and know how to work remotely and um, so i've just launched the poll um, i want to thank you um all everybody and if you just um uh, we will um, we'll receive a thank you email and then you get a confirmation of participation it's an online proof that you have attended the session and you can show uh, you can show that you have attended such course now i will be available here online to uh, answer any questions uh, in the next two to three minutes otherwise our session is finished now i'm just waiting for people to end the polling and if you're finished Filling in the poll, I would like to thank you so much for coming in. I would like to thank you even more um, for participating and, and being part of this, actually. Uh, this is, uh, it was awesome experience.